Okay. So, we're going to continue reading out of the spotlight on music grade three. A lot of these are, uh, I would say, more childish than than some of the higher grades. It's just the way it's going to be with grade three. Uh, also, if there's anybody who's actually watching this and has any thoughts about how to deal with putting the pages on the screen, you know, I, the, my issue is that I don't want to <laughs> spend almost any time editing. Um, and so it would obviously make sense to put each page as I'm reading over that page. But since I stop and start and talk about things, <coughs> it becomes an issue where I, I don't want to watch through the entire video and edit it in closely. So uh, if anybody has thoughts, because once they get up to like four pages, then I'm going to run into problems. I think for this one, I'm just going to try to shrink them down and mash it on there. <coughs> but yeah, uh, I have no thoughts that don't involve me actually editing, uh, which I'm just unwilling to do because it'll take away too much time from practicing. So here we go with the patriotic medley. <laughs> Key signatures matter, people. I don't even... Okay. happens <coughs> just from the chords <laughs> I recognize what, uh, what I'm playing without looking. Let's take the second inning here. Could have been better. <coughs> Let's start from the top. Mm. 
I'm not making it down. The there we go. Took the first inning again. I would have to make a mark about that. Let's start at the repeat. No uh, second inning. Oh, no, my eyes. I would have to write something on the page to, to help me find that second inning. for a page turn, honestly. So let's talk about that page turn for a second. <clears throat> this is a thing that I don't like in editorial decisions. That, um, that page turn is happening while I am playing a transition that is going to lead the students in to the next song. Um, it's just, it's a frustrating thing. This happens a lot uh, in choral octavos. It's not a lot. It happens frustratingly commonly, though, that there will be something like a really big transition with a major key change. Um, so you're doing this big modulation, and there's a key change in the middle of it. And the thing is, almost anywhere else you can hide. While they're singing, you can hide. You can comp something with one hand. Um, you can fake it. You can just lay out the chords as long as you're laying down the harmonic structure. Nobody will notice. The choir will not get lost. Um, the audience won't be able to tell. But when you put a page turn right where there's a big transition, you have a risk of making a mistake that orally confuses the choir, or in this case, this would be students. You really don't want to do this with kids. You don't want to make a mistake there. Now, like I've said before, if I were doing this for a performance, I, I would just have this copied out. I would just have four pages out in front of me because it's not a big deal to have that. Um, and with bigger choral octavos that are, you know, whatever, 12, 20 pages, I have systems and ways. I've figured out different ways of accordioning out the music uh, or setting up my page turns. So occasionally I've got three pages. Occasionally I've got one page. And most of the time I have two pages. But I have it set up in such a way that none of my page turns fall in really terrible places because I hate something like this. Now first I read it, it's fine. I stop for a second. I turn the page. I do it. Um, but even if you were performing this and you were trying to just memorize the page turn, the thing is, if you had a false page turn, something go wrong there, that's a nightmare scenario that's going to sink the ship, and that's not great. Um, <clears throat> you know, theoretically, uh, at some point I'll be happy with the where the technology is in terms of reading uh, digitally for gigs. I have tried it. I've used a, a turning pedal. It's one of those things where the failure points uh, exist in, in a way that doesn't exist with paper where I'm just not ready to trust it yet. So, carrying on to the fourth page after that little rant. <laughs>
E flat bar there. Something else I would do from a performance standpoint, uh, if I were doing this with kids, uh, starting on that last system where you've got C to shining C, I would add some rhythm because me just playing half notes with the students, they are really going to want to rush. You know, it's always that thing with adult congregations. People are just uncomfortable with space and stillness. They really hate rest, but they can't stand hanging on to long notes. And I feel like children, groups of children especially, super bad at this. If you're not laying down something that gives them that sense of time, those half notes feel like an eternity. And all it takes is, you know, there's always one student who wants to jump. It's usually several, and they all want to jump ahead a little bit. They're a little too anxious to hit that next half note. And then everybody starts kind of rushing. Uh, so let's start the bar before the last system, and I'll try to give a little example. So, you know, you could do something like that, just something. Anything, or... I feel like there needs to be more time there. Now, you know, if uh, the teacher that you're working with feels very confident that their students can do it, fine. If they specifically want you to do the half notes and they think they can conduct it, fine. That's good. Um, <clears throat> but being aware of that and being able to give the conductor the choice is really useful here. I, I in these situations where I'm working with teachers who are trying to manage sometimes a hundred kids doing this kind of thing, whatever you can do to assist them is really helpful. It's not always about playing just what's on the page. Normally they aren't going to have this weird control situation where they're like, mm, that's not what's on the page. That isn't within my inter interpretation. They almost always appreciate it. it whatever you can do to help. Uh, there's so many things where, you know, I will revoice, an accompaniment because you know these accompaniments aren't always playing the melody the melody note is almost never in the top there are a lot of times I'll revoice things specifically to have the melody note for whatever's coming up somewhere just to give pitches you know, especially during a transition if I can give that pitch so that there's something in the piano and then they can tell the kids it's gonna be in the piano you can listen for that note the note that's on top that helps so much and it's not in the music, you, it, you're just making good musical decisions to help have a successful performance. I'm going to read this one more time. <clears throat> of course you take the, the first inning again that is something where if i if i if I'm rehearsing i would never miss that twice uh, and also unless i was sight reading this in the room with them which it's possible but normally in cases like this i get the music at least a day ahead of time and i would make that mistake in my first reading exactly one time before i would write it in i would make some kind of big mark about Here's the first ending. The first ending goes all the way to here and probably put a giant asterisk on the second ending. Uh, if I missed it again, I'd brought myself a nasty note to not miss the second ending. So let's just start on that second ending. Very 
some sloppiness time around. But I'm just trying to keep going, more or less. there um i did you know if i were actually doing this i would hear where they were with the lyrics and i I'd just jump back in but let's just start at the top of the page <laughs> just generally throughout here I'm not getting right this is great when they have the chords written in because worst case scenario I can just start grabbing chords and that's all that really matters exactly what's on the page it really doesn't matter that much as long as I can keep the harmonic backbone together uh, chord changes where they go and I can keep some sort of rhythmic impulse of how the beat should feel uh, everybody's going to stick with it <clears throat> so I'm going to start at the top of the page and I'm going to see if I can just play this without looking, playing half of what's on the page. And the man, that little tag out would be something technically I have trouble with. Um, I'd be afraid I might miss that jump, so I might keep that B flat in the left hand in the same octave. I can't quite, you know, I have these small hands. I would probably start leaving out those Fs and jump, just leave that F out right there on beat two. And I could jump that octave afterward um, in a pinch. Anyway, I'm done here.